with the latest releases of AMD's RX 7600 and NVIDIA's RTX 4060 Ti, the internet is on fire, complaining about one critical specification, their video memory, or VRAM. Hardware Unboxed has been the flagship leading the charge, claiming that 8GB on mid-range GPUs is just not good enough, heading into 2023 and beyond. I've been replicating their work on various GPUs and games for nearly two months trying to cover this topic. And guys, I think we've finally fixed the problem. Let's get into it. Hey guys, Turk here. I hope you're having a good one. This VRAM problem on the surface seems pretty straightforward. Give my GPU more VRAM. Hardware Unboxed and I have identified that, yep, if you give these games enough VRAM, the problem solves itself. But once you start to dig into those GPUs and the games, that solution is more brute force than what historically appears to be the case. For me, this situation boils down to two different scenarios. First, what are the games doing with the VRAM? And more importantly, what has actually changed to fix these fail conditions? Second is how should we address 8GB GPUs going forward? There are a lot of 8 gig cards out on the market, so how should we classify 8 gig cards here in the year of our Lord 2023? With the problem stated, talk is cheap and data is money, so let's dive in. 8 gigabyte cards have been around for a long time, and even in Hardware Unboxed's latest review data, they perform well enough in their target resolutions. At 1080p, nearly all modern 8GB cards can average 60fps in their gaming suite across three generations of NVIDIA and two generations of AMD. 1440p begins to struggle a bit, with only the higher-end cards from the RTX 3000 series, and AMD's 6650 XT gets incredibly close. Digging deeper into their data, let's look at the 6600 XT. In my console killer build guide, I considered this card to be extremely close to the PlayStation 5 in terms of performance, and I think this card specifically showcases the VRAM hysteria well. In those 15 games, the 6600 XT hits above the 60fps threshold at 1440p. In Fortnite, Resident Evil 4, Call of Duty, Hitman 3, Watch Dogs Legion, Forza Horizon 5, and Spider-Man Remastered. Unfortunately, the newest games on their test suite all appear to fall behind, notably The Last of Us, F-122, Hogwarts Legacy, Cyberpunk 2077, Plague Tale Requiem, and Halo Infinite. Later in Hardware Box's video, they even showcase the game's performance issues, so let's load up my 6600 XT and recreate their results. I can recreate identical performance segmentation across the games I own, which is a good baseline for what Hardware Unbox has shown. Remember that my performance numbers won't match them exactly, but we're in a similar test condition for our discussions today. Now that we have a test platform, let's talk about my analysis. I'm going to load up each of the games at the same quality levels and will be recording the graphics card's allocated VRAM and its used VRAM. These two specs are critical since each game handles both parameters differently and tries to manage itself accordingly. With Forza Horizon 5 at 1440p and extreme quality preset, the 6600 XT allocates a bit over 8,000 megabytes of VRAM, nearly its entire buffer. During the test pass, the game actively uses over 7,300 megabytes of space. Though the game doesn't fail, it spits out warning messages saying we're running out of memory. In Plague Tale Requiem, the game allocates shy of the 8 gigabyte buffer, but only uses 6,300 megabytes of that space. The game shows no warnings, but we're clearly running against the wall regarding performance and VRAM capacity. The Last of Us Part 1 has come under a lot of scrutiny lately, and with its latest set of patches, it allocates 7,800 megabytes of space and uses 6,900. Even though we appear far from the card's limits, the game still struggles with VRAM usage, which impacts our frame times and results in massive 1% low frame drops. Skipping down a few games, we have Halo Infinite. 
With the Ultra preset, the game allocates 7100 megabytes of the VRAM buffer and only uses about 6 gigabytes for assets. On the surface, the performance and memory charts show no issues, but the problem is how the game actually looks. When running around the open world, Halo does a terrible job of loading in high quality assets, particularly with the foliage and the textures throughout the map. This would mean that the game is giving us a false positive result, since performance isn't indicative of the gameplay. The same goes with Hogwarts Legacy. It consumes similar levels of VRAM, but as we run around Hogsmeade and fly through the Quidditch race, textures are not streaming into the game correctly, and it's just a jarring experience that makes me want to just put my controller down. Beyond that, of the games I have access to, these ultra quality presets don't show VRAM issues in the games, and I find it fascinating how well VRAM usage and allocation scales across the board. Now we're at a bit of a crossroads. Do we blame the GPU? Do we blame the game? Or how about blaming our settings? In my opinion, I think we're over testing these types of GPUs. Sure, maxing out our settings to the highest looks good, but it's a waste of resources in most cases. Hardware and Box themselves said, The performance improvement you get from simply switching from ultra to high is typically in the range of 15 to 25 percent, which is nothing to scoff at. With such limited improvements to visuals, that does make the ultra presets in a lot of these games kind of dumb. Choosing ultra is punishing your hardware for not a great deal in return. In fact, in only one of these games would I say the highest preset offers the best optimized experience. If the balance of visuals and performance matters to you at all, high is the place to be. On a marginal mid-range GPU, these settings aren't a good fit, especially at 1440p. So what happens if we dial down our presets a single step? Does this alone fix the games? Forza Horizon 5 interestingly doesn't see any notable impact in memory usage. Still, the error messages are wholly gone during repeated runs and extended gameplay sessions. Plague Tale Requiem decides to drop some serious weight, shedding nearly 2 gigabytes of VRAM allocation across the test pass. The Last of Us is similar to Forza Horizon 5, mainly because of a single setting, Texture Streaming Rate. That setting is returned to its normal setting. This setting dictates the draw distance and how fast the engine should stream distant objects into the scene. This has a dramatic impact on VRAM usage. Halo Infinite now consumes more memory than before, but the game still fails to load in textures properly. Yep, using the recommended Hogwarts Legacy settings appears to fix the game. Textures are no longer popping around Hogsmeade, and we don't hit any frame rate drops while flying around the Quidditch course. An added benefit of this lower setting is improved performance with negligible quality loss. Last of Us sees a 39% improvement in performance and drastically better 1% lows. Hogwarts Legacy improves by 20%. Halo Infinite doesn't see a performance improvement, but visual quality actually improves with reduced texture quality down to medium. Forza Horizon 5 locks in 60 FPS with average frame rates increasing by 31%. And last and less noticeable is Plague Tale Requiem, with only a modest 7% improvement. Granted, these improvements aren't indicative for every game and every 8GB card, but it at least showcases the modest improvements possible with a slight dip in settings. Now, I know a lot of y'all are saying that changing settings is a bit of cope, so let's blame the game. To be honest with you guys, all the data you've seen to this point was collected over a month ago. As I collected B-roll for my first version of this video, I ran all these games again, and many of them just work. So I've recollected all of the data to this point, and I'm pleased to say that three of the games are fixed, and a fourth is now wholly playable. Forza Horizon 5 actually consumes more VRAM while running the benchmark loop, but I only see the warning messages pop up about 20% of the time, or one in five test passes. Still completely playable despite actually using more VRAM than before. Plague Tale Requiem received an update at the beginning of June, and at ultra settings, the game shaves off 600 megabytes from its VRAM allocation. The Last of Us Part 1 sees a drastic improvement in VRAM allocation, shaving about half a gigabyte from the buffer. 
Hogwarts Legacy sees the most significant improvement in playability, where they fixed a VRAM memory link, and now no blatantly obvious texture pop-in occurs while running around Hogsmeade. I didn't collect data here, but the Callisto protocol at 1440p and ultra settings was previously completely broken. The game would fail to clean up its memory as the player travels to new sections of the map. When you hit this fail condition, the game will never fix itself. Now with their latest update, the game correctly loads in textures, and if we do fill our buffer, it manages to recover itself. However, Halo Infinite is still busted when it comes to memory management. Foliage textures are still busted, so moving down to the medium texture quality setting actually streams assets incorrectly. Given the drastic improvement in functionality, the game quality is likely the culprit in our recent 8GB VRAM hysteria. But that isn't the complete story. Now that we've pinpointed the problem, identified some of the symptoms of the failures, and more or less found the smoking gun to the hysteria, it's time to address the elephant in the room. What do we do with 8GB GPUs? I've addressed this several times on the channel, and right now we're seeing a market shift in performance and quality that is disrupting PC gaming's perception of mid-range. With the ninth generation of consoles, these mainstream machines have at least 10 gigabytes of VRAM available for their GPUs, which rightly has 8 gigabyte GPU owners worried. And to make matters worse, even the least powerful console, the Series S, has 8 gigs of VRAM and already has problem running some of the recent PC ports. Historically, many mid-range GPUs have come equipped with 8 gigs of VRAM, but we can't use that as a standard anymore. To me, I think this latest generation of consoles is considered mid-range. As such, mid-range GPUs need to be able to play their console settings with no compromises. That means 1440p at optimized settings at 60 FPS is required to be deemed a mid-range GPU. To do that, you've got to have at least 10 gigabytes of VRAM for an unoptimized game. The data we've shown today proves just that. Ultra settings typically are above console quality settings, but they showcase the limitations of an 8 gig card, especially at 1440p. If the game is optimized though, 8 gigs can handle 1440p in most cases. But if the game requires patches to fix these types of issues, you need at least 10 gigabytes. As for mainstream, 1080p at high settings with up to 120 FPS is the sweet spot. And most of the cards can achieve that according to Hardware Unbox's latest data. If you want to pick up a high-end GPU, you're looking at 4K at 60 FPS and console settings, which I think requires at least 16 gigs of VRAM. 12 gigabyte GPUs are debatable for this designation, but it is better for consumers, the developers, and GPU manufacturers to stick to this designation on 16 gig cards. With these new definitions, cards like the 3060 Ti, 3070, 3070 Ti, 4060 Ti, and 7600, they just don't meet the mid-range classification. As much as it hurts me to say it, realistically, they behave more like a mainstream card. In 2020, the 8 gigabyte limit wasn't much of an issue, but three years later, you have to choose to either dial back settings or upgrade your card. We've proven in this video that dialing back settings is entirely viable, but adjusting settings is something a mainstream user would have to do to play the latest games coming out on the 9th gen consoles, plain and simple. Times are changing in the PC gaming space, and it's unfortunate that 8GB GPUs are the primary victim of the extreme backlash from the community. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not defending AMD or Nvidia here with their current releases. I still wholeheartedly agree with Hardware Unboxed. The 7600 is almost good enough to play console quality settings, but it just doesn't have the gusto to get it there. And in a sea of other 8GB cards, its current selling point at 270 US makes it a non-starter, especially considering that same type of performance is on the secondhand market for about $100 less. The 4060 Ti is also just too expensive and performs nearly the same as the 3060 Ti. On top of that, you can pick up a 6700 XT for cheaper and get arguably the same level of performance, 
with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And $100 for an additional eight gigs of VRAM? At that point, just go pick up an RX 6800 or a 4070. At the end of the day, playing modern titles on eight gigabytes requires a bit of compromise to get there. It's entirely possible to enjoy gaming on that level of a GPU, and if you have one of the former mid-range GPUs, don't feel ashamed that you have one of the fastest mainstream cards out right now. Tweaking settings should keep this card level relevant for the next few years. However, a word of caution for people that are looking to buy cards right now. Going into the second half of 2023 and beyond, developers are designing games to use more VRAM, and as gamers, we should be building and upgrading to do the same. But we can't trust developers completely. They often can't even release a game that works without months of patch releases. We must engage that enthusiast mindset, tinker with our settings, and validate our own personal quality thresholds. Cranking settings to the max, or relying solely on review data that does just the same, leaves a lot of performance on the table. And that's all I have to say about the 8GB VRAM hysteria. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Do you think my new definition of a mid-range cards fits what you're expecting going into 23? As always, you can catch me over on Twitter at the Turk. I love to post tech memes and all that stuff, but I appreciate you guys sticking to the end of the video. I hope you have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.